After we got hit by lightning in his Isla Fuerte, we wanted to get the hell out of there. So, Kimmy solo sailed up to Cartagena, which was quite a feat. It was about 140 miles. And I just had a back seat. It was her first time solo sailing, and she did a damn good job. I'm proud. Most of it was the instructor, though. stopped in Playa Blanca and picked up some Argentinians. Why exactly they were on our boat in the morning and where they came from and what they were going to do with was not clear because they had a very thick accent. We couldn't understand what the hell they were saying, <laughs> but we took them anyway. I couldn't understand a damn word. <laughs> Muy bien, felicitaciones. Ahora sí. Otra vez, entonces, cien veces. Tengo que hacerlo. Tengo que hacerlo, ¿no? Sí. Federico va a hacer algo mágico para nosotros. Hello. The, uh, 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 ¿De qué número está el.? Sí. On the. ¿De qué número está el.? ¿Qué? ¡Wow! ¡Oh, ahora el tree está en el lado izquierdo! ¡Es amazing! So we met these guys in uh, Playa Blanca and they decided to come with us. Yeah. I like drunkenly invited them. And <laughs> you always do. As I do for everyone, right? And they actually showed up. So <laughs> we've been hanging out doing magic tricks and drinking beer. And we sailed for like six hours up to uh, Cartagena from Playa Blanca. Packed up, up the whole channel. It was fun. It was fun for me because I was just driving. She was doing all the work. Bienvenidos, mi amigos. Muchas gracias. I hate this dinghy. It's a piece of shit. Don't ever buy a fucking quarter boat. This is like the third time this has happened. And my outboard's underwater again for the third time. So I have no car. I'm in a fucking dirty piece of shit place. I tried to tape this multiple times. I've tried everything to fix this, and I can't fix it. There's just no way to fix it. So every single thing I do, it comes off in the dinghy sinks, because this is the water line. So I did all this work, all this wood, for nothing. I just spent 150,000 pesos, and I gotta get rid of this dinghy. I can't, there's no way to fix this. So this is stuck on the boat for a while. All right, so it was only underwater to about here. It didn't get in the gas tank. Luckily, the gas tank is what made it float because it's about half full and it's full of air. So hopefully it didn't get too much salt water in it. That's got to be real good for the engine. <laughs> salt. So I'm just going to rinse it all off. And then I'll put some WD-40 in it and, re and uh, clean out the carburetor real good. And be okay. After all, the dinghy was not unfixable, so James repaired the outboard. We dropped the boys off and we fed you. Uh, they they said thank you and we they had a great time. That was their first sailing experience. That was that was pretty cool to have them on the boat. So everybody knows the key to a happy mechanic is food. 
Oh, I look good. We just got new fishing lures. I'm super excited about that. I want to go fishing now. Mm. Oh, yeah. This is good with a little ahibasco. It's like Tabasco, except not as good. At least it's hot sauce, because this is really hard to find here. There's no hot sauce in this country. There's like two brands. So we got some meat soup and some um, fish with salad and rice and plantain. And a laughing girl. She doesn't want anything. I didn't even realize I ordered two things. I just said, give me whatever's not fried. Who knows? There might be more coming. <laughs> I'll eat it all too. I'm a fat kid. Oh, baked salmon. I'm so full right now. <laughs> okay, anyway, three dollars. It's really cheap here. Come to Colombia. It's cheap. So we get back to the boat, and the, everything's messed up. The solar controller was completely out. I couldn't get the batteries to even turn on. I have an ammeter on the boat, and the thing was like pegged to 15 volts, and it wouldn't go anywhere else. And I was thinking that the whole electrical system was grounded, and, and some, somehow a lightning got in there and shorted it to the engine, and none of the lights worked at all in the whole boat. The spreader lights, the navigation lights, the tricolor lights, the interior lights, everything was blown. So I took out my inverter. I think it's post. I took out my solar controller you see right here this one it's all burn up and the bottom light doesn't work this is my all around white, white light this is my anchor light and these are my navigation lights that thing was four hundred dollars this was four hundred dollars that was three hundred and fifty dollars oh. this thing was i don't even know the whole antenna for the vhf is completely gone and the base of it is just like a, a socket it's supposed to be filled with like this resin and it's just completely burned out and I'm thinking what happened was it went through the cable and then got into the electrical system and went through the, the ground of the electrical system because the coil on here is completely like pow! I mean, I would have loved to hear the noise. I bet you this thing was loud. Next time we have a lightning storm, I'll just cow, 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 disconnect everything. I mean, I need an inverter. I need a, I need a, a solar controller. Look at the solar controller I'm using right now. Like, thank God I had this from when Mark sold me the boat, but this thing's like a $20 controller using my $600 solar panel. Here, let's take a look at this real quick. This thing is so heavy. I wonder if there's a way to get one that's not so heavy. All right, so here's here's the problem with the charger inverter. Do, 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 do. This is not supposed to look like that. The whole, I think the whole coil is, is totally messed up. The, they just gotta throw this out and put another one in there. It doesn't look like there's much on the actual controls side of it that's bad, but you know, I'm not the expert. Actually, I kinda am the expert. You're not? <laughs> As it happens every time, the interesting things happen when, when the camera's off. And in this instance, the camera was actually in my backpack and I was getting out of the dinghy and my hand slipped and I fell back in the dinghy and the whole backpack fell into the water. And I got it out really fast, but it ruined our tablet. It got the camera wet, so it was done. The second camera we had. So while James was uh, raging on the boat and repairing everything that was damaged by the lightning, I tried to find somebody I could fix our cannon which I did. I found a guy in a shopping center that only had a table in his in his camera shop. And all he was do was take apart cameras in this little room. But he, he did it. He fixed the camera for us. We really liked Cartagena. It was fun. There was good nightlife. And there was, so much party. There was good food. Good techno music. It wasn't expensive. After Eight weeks we spent in Cartagena, we knew the whole city and we've seen pretty much every bar and hustle that there is to see from the inside. We had a really good time in Cartagena. It, today is, um... Who knows? Tuesday. Don't try to figure that but out. it doesn't matter. That's a good thing. It's right? actually Miercules. Well, it doesn't matter, that's fine. That's good. Our last major passage was not very pleasant, as you might remember from episode, who God knows what, uh, where we came from Jamaica. We wanted to avoid that happen a second time, 
So James went out and got some work done on the boat. So that's the shape I got. This would be the bottom where I mount it to the boat. Alright, we're all done. The guy uh, kind of got mad at me for filming back there, but this is it. So we got one piece for each. Like that. So they're about two and a half inches tall. They're cut at a 45 degree angle. They don't meet up perfectly, but um, I'm gonna do a little bit more work to shape them. And man, this is gonna be this is gonna be really nice. So pretty. They charged me a uh, uh, hundred thousand pesos for the work for three guys for three hours, four hours, uh, was $30. <laughs> so that's pretty cheap. Here's the final product. Well, not the final product, but after getting the wood cut, uh, this is what I'm doing. So the, the problem was I was having waves come in and going up over the entire boat right here. They, they, the boat would go down right here and the wave would come over and just pummel this thing and get so much water into it. That side I had all probably a thousand gallons from over the over the weeks. I didn't even realize it was filling up the uh, the hull, the front of the hull, because it's compartmentalized. There's a false bottom, and I just I always figured that the drain would work, but it plugged but plugged itself up, and it. Well, you guys know. And so now I've got these pieces of wood that are going to block the waves like that. And then... I mean, I've got some finish work to do on the edges and uh, I'd really like to get that curve a little better right here. This, this shape needs to be more of a curve. And then uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna bolt or not bolt but screw them up from the bottom so you can't see it. And then I'll put some um, lacquer over it and make it the same color as the rest of the teak on the boat. This color here. So I think it's gonna be a really cool addition to the boat. I've got a lot of work to do with it, but one step at a time, I'm making this boat better and better. I'm making it more blue water from the aluminum, double aluminum rudder posts to the, the teak additions on the hatches here, laminated cedar dagger boards. Um, I'm reinforcing this entire front section before I put the spinnaker on right here. All these bolts I'm turning into 5 16 from quarter inch. These ones also. Everything just keeps breaking, so I just wanna make it really, really strong. I think everything needs to be a little stronger. And then, that's about it. This is a good boat. It's a good boat. If I had a bunch of money, I might I might buy like a production catamaran just to not have to worry about it. But this thing sails so good. I mean, I got a pretty sweet ride here, and I can change it around and do whatever I want to it. And really, I mean, I've trashed this boat, and all it needs is a paint job, and it'll look good again. Look at this. Not so new and pretty anymore, but whatever. It's not a big deal. It gets used. I'd rather use it and have fun with it than have a really, really, really pretty boat that never goes anywhere. We got a lot of stuff done in Cartagena, but we didn't kill ourselves overworking. Every, every day after each of us got everything done, we met at Doug and Drink some beer. All right, I'm gonna introduce you guys to the best beer in the world. It's called Club, Club Columbia. We currently have uh, negotiations <laughs> with Club Columbia to get a spinnaker that says Club Columbia in gold <laughs> that matches her bathing suit. That'd be so awesome, but here's the beer. I haven't figured this whole camera thing out yet. Oh, there you go. Club Columbia with a little uh, Tiki Man on it. <sighs> Club Columbia. It'll get you drunk. All right, I really hope you're gonna sponsor it. That would be so awesome.
That would be sick to have a Club Columbia spinnaker. I would, I would fly that shit. Yeah. And the sun Sudden dawn.